My name is Michelle Dongju. I am based at London College of Fashion and I'm co-director for DAP Lab, a cross-media design and performance laboratory I co-founded in 2004 with choreographer and filmmaker Johannes Beringer. In this presentation, I explore the potentiality that exists in entanglements, human and non-human, in immersive dance theatre and how these can be perceived as contaminating. In particular, I highlight a relation between costume and performer that is expressive and entangled, one where movement is unable to unfold through intertwined kinesthetic and material interactions. Additionally, as the title suggests, I link here to the issue of climate change. Specifically, I focus on how such intertwined relations have been sensed and enacted by performer choreographer Ju Xu in relation to two of my design prototypes, cryptogamic light cape and plastics dress in DAP Lab's current work, Mourning for a Dead Moon. Both costumes performed by Xu reside center stage in the shaping of new ideas for extended choreographies in the work that involve methods of co-creation and material interactions. Mourning for a Dead Moon premiered in 2019 and, a dance, and is a dance theatre work that responds poetically to the climate crisis and the polluting impacts of human activity to life on Earth. It explores multiple layers of perceptions in an audiovisual world that seems under severe pressure and yet also suffers from an unspoken melancholy, an atmosphere aroused by the dark lighting under a suspended digital moon and the music created by Dee Egan and Louis Marlowe. The featured dancers were Shu, Macarena Ortozar, Yoko Ishiguru and Helena Wren. The performance takes its inspiration in part from Anna Lauventaub Singh's book, The Mushroom at the End of the World. Here she promotes the sustaining of life on earth to be dependent on the successive interspecies assemblages, human and non-human ways of being and enabling human nature entanglements. In her prologue, she asks the question, what do you do when your world starts to fall apart? She answers, I go for a walk, and if I'm really lucky, I find mushrooms. A world falling apart here is one rendered precarious due to the deadly and unforeseen consequences of, of industrial progress to all life on Earth. While the fortuitous act of encountering mushrooms links to a more pleasurable notion of indeterminacy regarding our relations to nature, since mushrooms pop up unexpectedly, and this provides hope. In response, Dap Lab's Morning for a Dead Moon offers a for foray into, into the forest, albeit a dying one, a foraging that ponders issues of collaborative survival in a damaged world, and where costume and materials are seen as enabling entanglements that can motivate change. Both the cryptogamic light cape, a surreal response to hidden reproduction in non-seed bearing plants, as well as the moonlit night during an eclipse, and plastics dress, a long train of upcycled waste plastic from food packaging are understood to have their own vitality in the performance space. That is a capacity of non-human body, as Jane Bennett puts it in her book Vibrant Matter, to impede the designs of humans, in this case the dancer, and also to act, to have their own agency to act, their own propensities. They are conceptualized as co-creators of movement and inhabitants of the performance space. These are costumes designed to inhabit the nervous system of the seventh chemosphere in DAP Lab's series of kinetic atmospheres. Here they can live, breathe and distribute their influence like fungal spores shooting into an architecture that is immersive, kinetic, sensory and participatory. As my collaborator Beringer explains, kinetic atmospheres are conceived as formative, not built or constructed in a stable form, but responsive to movers or even wearable themselves. This is a notion of incompleteness and sensitiveness to others that also resides in my costume concepts that are a vital part of these shifting synesthetic atmospheres. And this is an image from Chemosphere Number no. 5, performed at Queen Mary Drama Theatre in London in December 2017. Materials permeate movement just as ideas permeate the formation of text. This is a core idea in the dance work and practice-based research I apply within DAP Lab. 
Our installations over the past decade were guided by various explorations of such permeation and immersion, which my design concepts drove as, in ta as tangible choreographic forays into the relation between bodies, costumes, objects, light and sound. Commenting on the potentiality of bodily and material interactions to affect change, the scholar Bruce Baird argues that there needs to be a certain openness or willingness to place oneself in a position to interact. Baird is referring to the openness to interaction in his book Hijikata Tatsumi and Bhutto dancing in a pool of grey grits, where he exposes some of the, of the mixed methods, art, literature, material, nature used by Hijikata to challenge movement expression. Bhutto dance has been hugely inspiring um, to all our work within DAP Lab. Yet the inflowing sensory openness, I argue here, is also a form of contamination or impuring a necessary and inevitable pr process of pollution that has been the, fo the focus of many studies in anthropology, political science, and medical history. In the case of the interweaving of influences and exposure, the in interdisciplinarity between costume, fashion design, choreography, filmmaking, sound art, and scenography invariably creates rich potentials as well as tensions, our processes subjected to becoming impure or making impure. In Staying with the Trouble, Donna Haraway proposes a new symbiosis in a disturbed landscape, utilizing the thought-provoking image of the tentacular, which is inspiring to me. The tentacular implies entanglements and a process of, it, of entwinement similar to the design in motion method I use, with, which unfolds through successive iterations of self-creation and symbiotic interaction between performer and material encumbrances. My costumes often informing specific characteristics such as applying heaviness or suggesting a character of movement, altering amplitude, stretching or collapsing posture and alignment. In Mourning for a Dead Moon, the formation of scenes one and three are contingent on the dancer choreographer Shu opening himself to his encounter with the cryptogamic light cape and plastic stress respectively in a form of speculative movement inquiry. The idea that the dress becomes the atmosphere or evaporates into it is part of the concept for the cryptogamic light cape. This is a cape constructed from offcuts of black soundproof cloth. This links sustainability and lined with lights. It is not designed as a spectacle of light, however, but as a manto to alter the quality of movement. It lives and breathes its lights programmed to do so with its wearer, Shu, in the dark forest of the performance space. Shu emerges from his habitat, his body weighted by his heavy black cloak, initially not seen but sensed in the weight of his footsteps. He moves and he explores the scenographic space. The movement is not tightly choreographed, but rather improvised. A set of feeling states or movement qualities that flow within the structure of the performance. Shu's dance morphs freely through the various state, states in response to the tactile stimulus of the materials. You can see this here in the short film, sexerped from the premiere.
but this is not meant to be like black art theatre where performers work in the dark, dressed in black, then magically appear. Rather, it is intended as an experiment in how movement character can be crafted or modified through that which touches the body, inside and outside, but cannot necessarily be seen, only felt or heard. Moreover, it is a creative method that utilizes costume as artistic technique stimulate something new to emerge choreographically through a process of paradoxical or reverse intervention that abandons convention, i.e. costumes role in performance, and fixed technique, how movement performance is devised through the use of verbal instruction, for example. With the cryptogamic light cape, the instruction is palpable and non-verbal, held within the textures of the cape and the way it is crafted. Its weight and light emitting capabilities and so on. Firstly, Shu held the lights tightly inside the denseness of the soundproof cloth, as if instructed to hide them to remain invisible as he moved in the space. Then gradually he allowed them to be revealed. With this part of his experience, he notes how the energy changed for him and his idea for movement possibilities were expanded with and through the light. You can see statements here in this quote. Towards the end of scene one, Shu hangs his lights on a dead tree, as if to animate it with the fruits he picks from inside his cape, glowing anaerobic fungi that need no light or oxygen to survive. The tree is then also part of the costume and the costume part of the tree. They merge and intertwine, extend and contract into one another, this simple gesture through the simple gesture of the dancer. And here we see the example of the anaerobic um, fungi on the right and the lights on the left and some light experiments relating to this, this garment. In summary, Shu noted his experiences with the cape and brought him a certain security and safety. He could, could hide inside the cape and its size and weight were reassuring. Furthermore, its influence was lingering as when he detached from the cape and placed it in the space, he had a feeling of being naked and light and thus, through the sensations he experienced in its absence, their bodies remain connected and expressively entwined in the choreography. The plastic stress scene is a dance of contamination, the toxic exploratory encounter between performer and conglomeration of single use plastic pots, bottles, containers. The plastic waste that I created um, over two week period in my household was used for the dress. I chose to upcycle it to further explore my interests in dancers and non-human partnering. Plastic has a bad reputation. It has been associated with all that is negative in terms of a more sustainable future for our climate and our planet. Furthermore, its potential to leach a whole raft of toxic chemicals pose carcinogenic and mutagenic threat to our bodies if absorbed and entwined on a cellular level. Things are always caught up within prior discursive frameworks that shape them in various ways and that this impacts and this impacts on how easily they speak their truths, notes bared on his thoughts relating to the physical material realm. This is certainly the case with materials like plastic. Yet the knowledge that has been revealed around the toxicity of plastics has generated a whole new choreography of life cycle thinking, thinking and a mapping of environmental footprints, which I, I wanted to fold into the textures of the costume. The first time Shu interacted with the plastics, he confided he saw them as his tail, a real part of his body. However, with each unfolding exploration, it was evident that Shu's relationship to the plastics was changing and he allowed the experience of the material to permeate his movements more profoundly. In one rehearsal, for example, he takes two round plastic lids and places them over his eyes like lenses that might enable him to see the world differently a seeing that travels inward as he covers his eyes with his hands and rolls backwards. He lays his head down. He listens. His movement behavior is cautious, inquisitive, Slowly he draws the plastic's mass upward 
and begins to wrap it around his neck. He gestures with both arms, whilst also visibly alerting, visibly alerted to the sounding the plastics make as his body, um, bodies uh, move and interact. Shu clearly desires to wear the plastics, you'll see in this film clip, um, because equally they're, they're very attractive to him as a mass of glinting surfaces under the theatre lights. He slowly begins to lift the plastics up into his hands and move his hands and fingers between the textures, and really engaging with the materials. And here I'll let you enjoy some of the clip. By the time Shu performed the scene in the, prem in the premiere, he had ingested the plastics like a whale and they had become his vomiters from his stomach, which lay at his feet, as he reveals here in this quote. The plastics or the vomiters were part of my body for sure, he explained, and he presented them out to the environment. To conclude, Lav and Hap Singh writes on contamination as collaboration, suggesting it as a means for new directions to emerge. Self-contained individuals are not transformed by encounters, she notes. This is an idea I have adopted here in this paper, where the intimacy of our contaminating relations and intertwining processes in Dap Lab's Morning for a Dead Moon enabled Xu to experience a very personal dialogue informed by his Chinese performer training in somatic cosmology between his dancing body and my designs, where costume coexists as character by synergistic relations with his body in space by mutually transforming an interdisciplinary human and non-human encounter. To see more um, and the prototypes and context, you can go here, have some references and my contact. Thank you.